8.5, we're gonna count up recursively. So I started with the count down method and we've already run this before. I'm gonna add the breakpoint here to line 31 by left clicking. Uh, we could run this in debug mode and, uh-oh, we got a problem. It's weird. Let's just delete. It was complaining about Fibonacci. Let's just delete that. Delete all that code. Ah, this is a leftover breakpoint. That's the problem. Huh, I'm not sure how to fix this method breakpoint. I'll take it out. Hmm. It's talking about the breakpoint we had in factorial. I don't want to undo everything, remove the breakpoint, and redo everything. I also don't want to create a brand new Java project to fix this issue. All right, we'll just talk our way through it. We'll just run it normally and not worry about that. All right, so this runs just like it did before, seven to one, and then blast off. What we're gonna do is we're gonna switch the order right here. Now, what's gonna happen, it's gonna say blast off at the uh, end, however, or I should say at the base case, but it's not gonna print out the numbers until it calls countdown. So now countdown, it's not gonna be zero at first, so it's gonna do countdown in minus one, but it's not going to print anything. So it's going to run countdown with seven. Let's just go to three. So here we go. This goes blast off one, two, three. What in the world's happening? Well, we're not printing anything before we call countdown again. So it's going to loop back here, do countdown, and then it's going to call countdown, come up here to countdown, call countdown, come up here to countdown. Eventually, n is going to be zero, and it's going to print blast off, which is what you see. Uh, then it will return. It will stop executing. It will return, but it won't return up here. It'll return to where countdown to where countdown was called, and then it will print out n, and then it will finish. But then it will return not to here, but it will return to finish that, so it'll return to here. So changing the order of this, we did the recursive first, and then the print second, and it goes backwards. So this may be tricky, and I think a good way to illuminate what's happening. That's the original version there. Now what I'm going to do... Let's just run this so you see that it's the normal version. Seven to one, blast off, all right. This will be after the method call. Now we'll run it. So now I have a print before countdown call and a print after. Uh, and let's even go, well, we'll just run it like this. So you see the normal execution here that you're expecting. And then here's the after call. So once countdown is finished running, it goes down to the next line. And line 31 is executed. And so it's done all the regular stuff up here. And this print statement doesn't run until countdown is done calling itself. Once it's done calling itself, this will execute. And the reason you see a one here is because countdown went from seven down to one and then this runs on one and then it returns and it returns to here on the previous method call where n was two and this basically counts back up and this can be quite tricky to understand and sometimes a good way is actually that stack trace let's see right here where you're basically going simpler 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 and then as you come back out, uh, the values, for example, it was three, two, one, and then we had the blast off, and then it goes, once you finish, then we had a second print statement that used this value one and printed one, and then finished, and then it had the value two, printed a two, 
and then finished, etc., back to seven. And that's quite tricky to understand. And I wish I knew how to get rid of this breakpoint and run it, but that's okay.